Do you remember the old E.T. movie by Steven Spielberg? And would you love if Spielberg made more movies just like that? Well, me too. But unfortunately, Spielberg don't shoot movies like that anymore. He's all grown up. But I'm not. So I got this crazy idea. Spielberg was 36 years old when he did E.T. And I'm 36 years old right now. So maybe I could make one myself. Why not? How hard can it actually be to make a sci-fi story with some kids, a dog, an alien, and a big UFO? My name is Richard Thompson, and I just released a trailer of exactly that. Come over here. We found something. Two brothers make a discovery back in 1947, which will change their lives forever. How much do you think it weighs? Probably as much as father's truck, or even more. Can we dig it up? If we work all night. Something that wasn't supposed to be here on Earth. Where does it come from? From the sky, of course. So what did you think? Was it a little bit awesome? Awesome? Very awesome? Or like crazy awesome? Wanna see more? Type awesome in the comments if you think this is awesome. Come along and witness how their story begins and follow their life journey as they have the space apart. Okay, that was just a small part of the trailer we released for uh, our own sci-fi series, The Space Apart. Uh, it's not a rip-off, it's not a remake, it's not a copy kind of movie thing from E.T. especially. It's hugely inspired by E.T., Gremlins, um, The Thing, uh, you know, all those 80s movies, um, sci-fi movies, uh, especially uh, when they used practical effects. They had um, miniature models, like we have a, uh, this uh, UFO, uh, that's a miniature model. And we have the alien, of course, that's an animatronic puppet that you control with rods and stuff and, uh, and uh, servos inside so he can blink and open his mouth and stuff. That's the way I want to tell my stories with that old, like, you know, that special feeling and with that special soundtrack, like, it's, it sounds original. It's like, like for, for only this movie, they made a full music score, you know? Nowadays, it's very, very similar music for every movie. And it's all packed with CGI and they fly around, they do stuff and they jump from walls and they... Nothing wrong with that, but it's not my way. I don't want to watch movies like that. And as I mentioned before, Spielberg don't actually do movies like he did in the 80s because he can do whatever he wants. So he experimenting, he, he, he's done all that stuff with animatronics and, and that kind of stuff in the 80s. But now he can do whatever he wants uh, because he's like the biggest director in the world. And I'm a huge fan, I love his work, everything he do, but I miss that movie style film, you know, when you see the film grain like this, I'm putting it all right here, you see the like hairs and stuff in the screen, um, like you really go on a, like a, you go out watch a movie Friday night, you buy popcorn, you take a slice of pizza, you 
you drink your favorite soda and you just like, mm, I'm just gonna watch this movie and I'm gonna pay for the ticket. I'm gonna watch it. I'm not gonna sit back home and watch it on a streaming service, you know? Nothing wrong with that. That's the world we live in right now. But I miss that innocent kind of thing when you kind of, you know, like John Carpenter's movies, uh, like Christine and uh, The Thing, uh, a bunch of other movies from John Carpenter. When you're like, that's amazing how they did those practical effects, uh, how they could do all that. And that's that combined with the like the film grain, as I mentioned, when they actually shoot everything on a film, you know, it's spinning. There's something taking up space, you know, not just a hard drive or something that, OK, we can erase it later. We can remove we can do whatever we want. We put some CGI on it and then we just fix everything in post and everything is going to look like everything else out there. It's nothing like mm, we got to capture this scene, this moment, this thing and what's go in through the lens. It's what's matter in the cinema experience when people watching it and, uh, you know, everything is like we, we only have sun like this long. We can't like put up a green screen and add a bunch of sun if we want to or do like they do in the uh, Mandalorian. They have a big backdrop with the. Uh, you know, trackable cameras and stuff. That's awesome. That's cool. I want to try it. I want to see how that feels to have that um, playfulness. You can do whatever you want. But what we did was to do it like the 80s. We gathered a bunch of passionate, kind of talented people, uh, if I may say so, um, with, you know, camera equipment, light equipment, uh, uh, special effects uh, knowledge. Uh, uh, we had a, a sound department with music department. Uh, practical effects company got involved. We had two girls that was very good at making clothing. So they ma made this uh, costume uh, stuff for a whole project. Everything is like custom made. Uh, we had a guy with a lot of... Uh, vintage cars and stuff, you know, you know, we, we just gathered a bunch of people to make this story, you know, and uh, no budget at all. Everyone did it for free. We did it because we love this kind of stuff. And uh, the actors are doing this for the first time. We're all from Sweden, as you may hear on the Maya voice. And um, we, we, we just watched a lot of 80s movies and we tried to figure out how did they use the cinematography as I said how did they move the camera how did they light the scene how how was the story built up and yeah watch the full trailer and uh, you, you'll know okay so um, check it out it's a new sci-fi series it's free to watch. Uh, it's uh, right here on YouTube. Uh, so, uh, yeah, click that link if you want to see the full trailer. And if you want to chat with me in the comments, talk about a project we are doing right, right now. Okay, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'm Richard Thompson. That's a wrap, everybody. <laughs>